Hello and welcome back to my Fantasia Toy Box. I'm Professor Toy Box. This is Sorcerer's Apprentice Mickey, and it's Friday, and that means it's time for another episode of Toy Box Tutorials. We're working on this part of the interior of the Magician's Castle, and two weeks ago we used the Falling Object Generator to drop a mine down this ramp, and last week we hooked up a repeater to create a steady stream of mines that will roll down the ramp. But I've been pointing out that they don't roll very well, and you actually saw a great example of that two weeks ago when I tried to drop some boulders down that ramp. They didn't roll very far before they got stuck up there in the flat section at the top. Fortunately, there's a toy that can help us out with that problem, and that's the weather vane. And that's our topic for today's lesson. And once again, you can find this toy in the Creativa Toys drawer. The weather vane allows you to create wind in your toy box. You can set the strength and direction of the wind, and unlike the real wind, you can decide what this wind will affect. And I'm going to use it to help make these mines roll better down that ramp. And so I'm going to place one out here behind the point where you drop the uh, mines. And I'll drop it out here, and you'll notice which direction I'm pointing it is that way. And we're going to need one more toy, and that's a locator. And the locator tells, uh, tells it which direction the wind needs to go. So what we're going to be doing is creating a uh, connection between <coughs> this and that locator. And we do that from the logic menu by doing a new locator connection. And we connect up to that locator. And so that sets the direction of the force that this is going to generate. And I want to point out that when you do this, the wind isn't coming per se from this object. And so even though I've placed this here, it's not like you can stand off to the side and you're not going to be affected by it. Uh, this is basically saying that we're going to create some wind going that direction and it's going to fill the entire length of this toy box. And so no matter where we stand or where the object is that this is going to affect, it's going to affect it. So I could be way out over here and it would affect me if I have it set up that way. So I want to make that very clear. That's one of the confusing things about this toy is that this is really just telling which direction the wind is blowing, not the source of the wind. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Now as we open up the logic menu once more, you'll notice we have some properties, and there are two of them. The first is force, and this is how strong the wind is. So the, the less you make this, the weaker the wind is. And you can take this thing up quite a ways. I'm going to set this at 8, because I don't need this to be too strong. I just want to get those balls moving down that ramp. If I set it too hard, <laughs> the uh, balls are going to go flying. may not even be uh, staying on the ramp. Now the next property is affected objects, and this tells what this wind is going to affect. By default it's everything, and that's how wind normally works. But being a computer game, you can change this to affect anything you want. So you can have it affect just physics balls, just players, only friends and enemies, only vehicles, or whoever happens to trigger this by pushing a button or something. And for me, I'm going to have this affect the physics balls, which means this wind only affects those. So it's not going to have any effect on Mickey, any effect on the brooms, nothing like that. All right, so that's the properties. And by default, this toy is off. So you need a logic connection to turn it on. And so we're going to set it up with our trigger area over here. And we'll do a new logic connection when entered by player any. We'll come back over to our weather vane. And there are two behaviors with this toy. You can turn it on and you can turn it off. So my trigger area is going to turn it on because again the default is that it's off. 
And now the wind will be blowing those um, mines down this ramp. And so when we turn off the mines with this button, we should turn off that wind as well. And then the uh, CPU inside the console will not be working as hard. So on the button, new logic connection when pressed, we'll come over to our weather vane and turn it off. And uh, while we're right here, the last thing I want to look at on the weather vane are the logic connections here. And as you would expect, it's just on and off. So when something turns on the weather vane, you can use this signal to invoke another toy. So it's going to send this message when the weather vane is on. And it's going to send that message when the weather vane is turned off. And I'll cancel out of this because I don't need to make any logic connections. But I want you to be aware that those are there. And it can be helpful if this weather vane can be turned on by a variety of different things to have uh, other toys downstream just trigger off of this. So you only have to make one logic connection then. You don't have to hook up everything to that. All right, so there we are. And let's go ahead and test it out. And see how those mines roll. So we'll come down here and run through this trigger area. Here it comes. And as you can see, it's not really pausing up there on top of that ramp. So that's good. You'll also notice that first mine exploded when it hit the edge of the uh, cliff over here. <laughs> and so did that one. So that wind is definitely pushing it. So that's another great indicator for Mickey that, hey, if I try to run up that ramp, that would be a really stupid idea. <laughs> And if that's a little too strong, you can adjust that and make it a little bit weaker. So a few of those mines rolled down that ramp and didn't have a problem. And again, to turn off the wind, as well as the mines, Mickey will have to come up here on top of the uh, tower and press the button. So that's the weather vane. You can use it to push all kinds of things around your toy box or knock the player off a ledge. If you're building a flying game, you can use it to create an updraft near a cliff or a jet stream that speeds up the player or slows them down. If you're building an underwater toy box, you can use it to create river and ocean currents. There's a lot you can do with this toy. Next time, we're going to look at various toys in the platforming toys drawer as we set up some additional traps and puzzles in this area that Mickey will have to solve. So if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, click my photo in the lower right corner, and then you won't miss the next episode. That's all for me today. Have a great weekend.